we're going to talk about uh, our <clears throat> year-long or so results of uh, the new Micropulse uh, diode laser. So we know that glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible blindness worldwide, and uh, all of our current therapies are directing, directed at lowering uh, intraocular pressure. We can do this a couple ways. We can try to increase the outflow with our more traditional surgical procedures, such as traps and tubes, um, or we can try to decrease production um, with drops or, uh, in this case, cyclophotocoagulation in the operating room, or typically done in the operating room. Um, so cyclophotocoagulation is um, a ciliary body destructive procedure. Uh, it's traditionally performed with a uh, continuous semiconductor diode laser. It emits an 810 nanometer infrared light. Uh, the reason we settled on this laser over the past um, few years is that it's uh, shown to have better penetration into the pigmented tissue compared to other types of lasers, such as the YAG laser. Prior to this, they were using um, diathermy when the um, uh, process originally started and then switched over to cryotherapy, which had um, terrible side effect profiles, and so they started using lasers when those became available. And the side effect profile has improved greatly, which makes you wonder why we want to do anything different, um, and mainly because there's still a lot of uh, bad side effects associated with this procedure. So the target is the pigmented ciliary body epithelium where the aqueous is produced. Um, but based on some histopathological studies that have been done, uh, we know that the continuous laser causes collateral damage to the surrounding structures. Um, these include the pars plana and going in the other direction, the iris root, uh, as well as the ciliary body stroma and muscle. So this leads to complications uh, such as prolonged inflammation, uh, hypotony, tysis, uh, and loss of visual acuity. Um, there's several theories uh, behind why uh, the visual acuity decreases. Some we can see if they develop an epiretinal membrane or have CME afterwards, but the thought is that um, basically the laser energy is penetrating too far and is uh, going all the way through to, to the retina. Um, therefore, uh, we have started using this really only in cases of refractory glaucoma, those that have failed prior procedures or don't have very much visual potential and are not good candidates uh, for uh, incisional surgeries. Um, Micropulse came along uh, in the literature, uh, originally was looked at uh, to treat macular edema, and they showed that uh, with this subthreshold laser, um, you could reduce the amount of CME from diabetes or uh, branch retinal vein occlusions and there would not be these lasting laser scars that you could see on OCT. So they started trying to use this same uh, technology to treat uh, the ciliary body. Um, the idea behind it is it's short pulses of laser energy followed by a cooling period, which allows the other surrounding structures to, to cool off and, and have less thermal damage. Um, this theoretically would allow us to provide uh, a similar IOP lowering effect uh, without all of the bad side effects or hopefully less uh, side effects, um, which could then in turn allow us to use this uh, as a more primary form uh, of glaucoma when patients still have useful vision and we don't want to perform an incisional surgery or maybe even have better side effect profile than incisional surgery. Um, the early trials that first came out about Micropulse showed a 73 to 80% success rate. Uh, success was defined as a pressure between 5 and 21 or a 30% reduction from baseline. The key part in the early trials was that they had almost no loss of vision, which was defined as more than two lines of Snellen acuity, whereas uh, most of the studies done on diode laser uh, ranged from 23 to 40%. Uh, the 40% number you could argue is high because these are already being done in, in you know, sick eyes that have poor vision, um, but the 23% comes where they actually compared that to uh, as a primary treatment for glaucoma compared to medicine, and the 23% was the exact same amount of vision loss in the uh, drop treatment group as well as the primary diode treatment group. Uh, but still, 23% is a lot higher than 0%. This is just a diagram of the duty cycle between the two lasers. On the left is, you can see the continuous wave where laser energy is constantly being applied. Uh, and then you have the micropulse where you have this short on time, uh, which is set on the laser. We typically use 0.5 milliseconds followed by a rest period of 1.1 milliseconds to allow that surrounding tissue to cool. And then this is just a diagram of how the treatment is applied. Again, on the left, you're using the diode laser where you're placing individual spots. Um, the micropulse pro is a different probe than 
the typical traditional diode probe, and it actually remains on the eye, the globe, the entire time, and is kind of painted back and forth uh, along each uh, hemisphere uh, for a set amount of time. We used 80 seconds in each, um, with about 10 seconds to go all the way with each sweep. So what we wanted to do was to see how uh, our results were with the micropulse laser and compare it to our uh, traditional diode. So we looked at um, all the micropulse and diode, traditional diode lasers done uh, in the past year when the micropulse first became available. Um, all these procedures were performed uh, here at the, by the UAB Glaucoma Department faculty. Um, our only exclusion criteria for this part of the study was if we didn't have enough follow-up to see what the pressure would be less than a month. Um, so we wound up with about 29 eyes that underwent micropulse and 36 eyes that underwent traditional diode. You can see our parameters at the bottom, which I've kind of mentioned. For traditional diode, each eye was treated 270 degrees with 18 to 22 spots. And with traditional diode, you can titrate uh, the treatment to try to achieve um, some audible pops on, on some of the spots so that you know you're um, damaging the ciliary body and achieving the, the treatment level that you're looking for. Um, these were our results. Uh, the pre-op pressure was um, uh, 29 or so in the micropulse group and a little bit higher, 35, in the diode group. Um, there was a significant reduction in both uh, groups at one month and uh, at final follow-up, which on average was about 17 weeks out for both groups so far. Um, but the traditional diode group did have a much higher uh, IOP lowering effect. Uh, Pre-op drops, a significant reduction in both, again, more of a reduction in the traditional diode group. Uh, as far as complications, um, only 17% of the micropulse patients lost uh, two lines of visual acuity, which um, also included making a transition from 2400 to count fingers or count fingers to hand motion um, versus 38% in the traditional diode group. Um, the big thing is that uh, we had no patients uh, who had any uh, vision before have a reduction to no light perception in the micropulse group, while two patients in the diode group had vision and ended up with no light perception afterwards. Um, interestingly enough, our one case of hypotony was found in the micropulse group. They developed hypotony maculopathy. The vision did resolve, but not back to baseline afterwards. Um, and then finally, uh, retreatment rates were um, unsurprisingly a little higher, in, or high, definitely higher in the micropulse group. Um, the retreatments were uh, at the discretion of the physician. They were then allowed to retreat either with micropulse or uh, traditional diode at that point. So our conclusion so far is that um, we know that we can lower the pressure with micropulse and not threaten visual acuity as much. Uh, we had a 73% uh, success rate at 17 weeks of follow-up on average, which again was either a pressure between 5 and 21 or a 30% reduction from baseline. Um, it did, however, require a higher rate of retreatment compared to traditional diode. Um, Loss of visual acuity was the most common complication in both procedures. Again, though, diode had a much greater loss of visual acuity and had the only patients that experienced reduction to no light perception. Um, we'd like to follow these results out over a longer time to see if these pressure reductions are uh, long-lasting and significant um, to see if we can start using this as a uh, more first-line therapy in patients who still have good visual acuity uh, but may not be good candidates for uh, incisional surgery.